Hi, welcome to Edward Box Guitar Tuition. So my classic album inspection today is Mr. Big's debut album. It came out June the 20th, 1989. It's 35 years old today. So I just think remember me quite a big buzz about this album. Uh, obviously I was well aware of Paul Gilbert and Billy Sheen. Um, Billy Sheen from Daily Roth. His time spent there. Obviously superb on the Eat Smile album. Uh, Paul Gilbert, obviously one of the top shredders. Um, and he'd done the two albums with Racer X and a live album, so I was a fan of those. Uh, so the, this was kind of like a super group. Um, uh, in a loose sort of term, you know, we, we bandy around the, the word super group. Originally, the first super group was kind of Queen, because, um, you know, Ginger Baker had been in uh, Graham Bond's band, I think. Uh, Clapton and uh, I think Jack Bruce had been Graham Bond's band as well, and Clapton had been in uh, John Mayles' band. And the Yardbirds, so those really were big acts of the day. And then they did Blind Faith, as it were, um, and that had big names and so on. Uh, so, you know, this was relatively super. Uh, they had Pat Torpy on drums, whose work I wasn't aware of at the time, uh, and Eric Martin on uh, vocals. And I knew Eric Martin from uh, Reviews and Crown, his Eric Martin band solo albums. Um, so these were kind of known people. Obviously, I would say Sheen and Gilbert uh, being probably the best known in muso circles. Um, so what's the initial uh, thing with this album is obviously it's a lot more commercial even than the daily Ross stuff in some ways um, it's got a hard rock uh, sound not much hair metal in this but um, big hooks very uh, polished production uh, and a, uh, a kind of move towards songs that are gonna work on radio pretty much every song on this album has been conceived to possibly be played on radio um, so a little story about how, how this came into being for me, it says June the 20th, I imagine I got it after that, I think it was released in the UK, probably sometime in August I think, um, but I was, uh, I finished my first year of college and I was down uh, in Cumbria where I was born and uh, I needed albums coming out and I needed to pop up to Newcastle because I kind of wanted to sort out my accommodation a bit where I was living, I don't really know why I did this but anyway I hot tailed up on the train on a free day from work uh, and I, um, you know, went up to where I lived, which is up at Crudders Park. I probably stayed there, I don't know, 45 minutes. Then I walked into town, went and bought Mr. Big <laughs> and Trouble in Angel City uh, on import, which is Lion's second album on Grand Slam Records. I bought these in Windows and uh, promptly just walked back to the train station and went home. So I, was, uh, I went in and out of Newcastle an hour and a half. Uh, when my dad picked me up at the station, he said, that was quick. Did you accomplish uh, all you wanted to? <laughs> Something like that. But anyway, I liked this album at the time. I didn't love it. Um, I kind of give it quite a few spins at the time. And then it was kind of discarded. Uh, later on, I checked out the Lean Into It album. And I felt pretty much the same. Listening to it now, I think uh, what I discovered is probably the most I've liked it. And at that distance of time has seen what I, I'm not keen on, what I am keen on. I think the first port of call of this is... Uh, the band works really well. This has got real chemistry. And I think it's pretty telling that a lot of so-called supergroups never get past the second album, the first album. Whereas Mr. Big did four albums of this lineup, then Richie Cotson joined, and then they split up, and then they came back with this lineup until the passing of Pat Torpy. Had, was it Matt Starr was playing drums and then someone else? So, you know, they are a proper band. Uh, Pat Torpy just keeps it really straight, keeps a good groove. Billy Sheen and Paul Gilbert on this album do shred a bit. Uh, they do a unison line on Addicted to That Rush. Uh, and there's other things uh, as well. Uh, but they kind of calm things down, which we'll go into. And then Eric Martin uh, really is excellent. Um, uh, he's got a really good uh, rock voice in the Paul Rogers, Steve Marriott um, type of vein. Uh, and authentic as well. You know, when you hear the guy speak... It's got the same sort of timbre that comes out when he sings. So a really, what I call honest voice, a very good range, very good control, good at rockers or ballads. So I opens up with Addicted to That Rush. This was the kind of the signature track. This had Paul Gilbert really depping for Steve Vai and the Power Twins uh, thing. Really cool intro with some uh, unison uh, guitar and tapping, uh, up-tempo riffing. Uh, and then a uh, really catchy song, really good bridge, whoa, you know, uh, there's quite a lot of whoa woes on this album. I think that's the other thing, uh, the backing vocals are excellent, both Billy Sheen and Paul Gilbert sing lead vocals, or have sung lead vocals. Uh, I'm not sure Pat Torpy did backing vocals, but they, they really have that covered, and there's a great blend with Eric Martin. 
Um, uh, so yeah, Paul fairly rips up on this, but what's interesting is he does a very short solo. You know, he's probably playing 10 to 15 seconds on this. He does his classic string skipping Racer X minor seven lick, who uh, Racer X fans will be aware of that. Um, and that really sets out the stall on this. The, the solos are short, they're like Van Halen. Uh, you know, Paul's kind of taking a leap of uh, leaf from that and doing short and more concise solos. So great opening tracks. Next tracks, Wind Me Up. Again, I really like this track. It's got it's got a kind of satisfaction type stomp. Um, really catchy chorus. Uh, nice kind of half time groove uh, on the uh, verses. Cool solo from Paul. Uh, Eric Martin Gilbert, Pat Torpy co write this. Uh, Paul Gilbert, Billy Sheen, Pat Torpy wrote Addicted That Rush. Quite interesting the blend of writing on this. Merciless is next. This has got your, your, your sort of typical being with sort of groovy riff that. Bands would sometimes do that type of tip, extreme later on. Uh, uh, typical lyrics, actually all the lyrics on this album are about women or um, uh, love or whatever. Merciless is about, you know, uh, an awesome looking woman. Uh, those legs are merciless or something like that. No, that strut is merciless. So very much keeping in with uh, the hair, glam tight lyrics of the time. Um, but obviously the band didn't have anything like that image. Uh, Gilbert Martin Torpy, again, 3 minutes 57, so... Um, you know, these opening tracks are all kind of on to the point. This does a really cool solo. I think it's the last time Paul used a whammy. Um, he does a silly woo-woo-woo at the end, which I really enjoy. If you remember in Racer X, he would go for the whammy bar. By the time I saw him on tour and I leaned into it, to it, he would kind of do whammy drops with a Digitech whammy pedal, a pitch shift. Um, so it's a cool solo. Uh, another thing about Paul is kind of more pentatonic blues on this album. There's no harmonic minor, as far well, as I'm aware, Phrygian dominant. Um, uh, or d diminished seven arpeggios, anything like that. Um, there you go, Had It Enough. This is written by Sheehan. So this is uh, a really good power ballad. It starts off with a really cool Billy uh, intro. It's 4 minutes 57, but he takes his intro off the songs, four and a half. Um, uh, really good, um, like I said, power ballad, really nice minor 11 chord at the start. Um, it's such two, I think. Uh, Eric Martin's excellent vocals on this. Always really like this track. Uh, and then side uh, A, uh, track five, this is the original vinyl, finished with Blame It On My Use, Gilbert Martin Sheen composition, just a straight ahead rocker, uh, not about um, women, this one, or love, 4 minutes 14, uh, good track, not a great track, but good. Um, yes, yeah, so the original album had 10 tracks, um, the, the CD, I think, has a bonus track of 30 Days in the Hulk Humble Pie cover, but I'm pretty aware that it was uh, 10 tracks, it's 46 54 with a bonus track, so you're talking about 42 minutes. So again, a concise length. So pretty strong. So I went side two opens with a really strong track, Take a Walk. This has got a really cool chugging riff by Paul and a nice kind of rolling pull-off lick. Um, again, another cool solo. 3 minutes 57, hits the spot. I think it takes a little dip here with Big Love and How Can You Do What You Do, but they're not bad tracks. Big Love's an Eric Martin competition, 4 minutes 49. Uh, very sort of more AOR. Um... But um, it's okay, you know, good vocals. The, the, the playing and the musicianship's too good for stuff to fall, which is always the thing with supergroups. It's kind of like Chicken Foot. The album's kind of a bit boring and bland, but it never falls below a certain level because the, you know, the, the people involved are so good. How can you do what you're doing? This has got an interesting riff. This is written by Eric Martin with Jonathan Kane, A Journey. So quite interesting riff. It feels more like Paul would write this riff. Um, this has got an excellent solo by Paul. Um, one of his best, he does uh, a really great sort of building pentatonic blues and a lovely skipped arpeggio passage and a mega pinch harmonic at the end. So, um, really strong solo there, concise. They've got anything for you. So, this is like the really big ballad on the album. A uh, lovely chord on this by Paul. I remember my mate showing me it. Um, 4 minutes 37. Uh, it's written, co written by Paul Martin and uh, Billy Sheen. Uh, great solo on this by Paul. My only thing is, is just his finishing notes. Uh, you know, I'd prefer it to go up a bit higher, but again, he does a lovely arpeggio passage, really melodic, nice pocket. That, that's the other thing when he's playing, and Paul still starting to groove more. You may remember his second instructional video focused on tapping your foot more and being more syncopated over the beat and anticipating the beat. Uh, and playing off the beat and stuff, kind of thing. So that's good, that's coming out on that. And then the final tracks in Eric Martin composition, just a straight head rocker, rock and roll over. Obviously nicked off the Kiss title. Nice solo in this, but excellent outro solo from Paul. Um, uh, really good. So on this, I mean, 
you know, I'd give it 8 out of 10, but I'm going to drop a mark. And my, my big issue when I came back to this album is the production by Kevin Elson. I never really liked Kevin Elson. I didn't like his production on the final countdown. But it's, it's very trashy. It's got a very trashy top end. I think it's uh, been remastered. Um, but um, the, the top end's trashy. Uh, but Paul's guitar swamped in chorus. And Paul Gilbert does like to use kind of a swirly chorus, you know, with a rating depth buff a bit. Now, I like chorus on guitar songs. I like smooth chorus, like, for instance, you listen to Slide It In by the, the Keith Olsen remix. that has got a subtle smooth chorus, whereas something like this album or Hurricane Slave to the Grind album with Doug Aldrin on guitar have slightly swirly choruses. And then the upshot of that is, is when you double track the guitar, it kind of enhances that. So to me, it doesn't spread the sound like it would because, of course, it's got a slight detune. It doesn't sit as well to me. But that's just my viewpoint. Bass is nice, it's clanky, but it could do with a bigger bottom, um, more warmth. Uh, listening to the Lean Into album, which came after this, that's got bad production. It's a bit tighter. Uh, the drums aren't as you know snappy. The top ends off a bit, and the chorus, the guitar isn't as chorus, so a little more natural sounding. So I just, uh, from a personal point of view. Uh, that lets it down, but it's been a pleasant surprise coming back to this. Um, uh, I don't think it's got a bad track on it. Maybe it is an 8 out of 10. Um, uh, the songs are really well crafted. You can see the bands had a mission statement, really. Write songs under 5 minutes, under 4 minutes. That can all be potential singles, have big hooks, uh, have relatable lyrics, cut down guitar solos, make it concise, and have achieved that. And then, obviously, with the Lean Into It album, uh, they... Uh, had the huge hit to be with you um that's written by eric martin and a guy called david graham i think what's interesting with that track is it's the last track on the album and i think it's a kind of afterthought i don't know if this is true i think maybe eric martin's gone and got this song oh let's do eric's song acoustic that'd be a nice way to finish his album i don't think the band's thinking yeah we're going to have a more than words type hit i can't uh, i think this comes after more than words they're both around a similar time when they were hits this came album came out uh April 16th in Europe. Um, so this album I never liked as much, but I think that's because I didn't get it at the time. But uh, Daddy Brewing Your Little Boy's good. Uh, Alive and Kicks Good. Obviously, Green's Tinted Sixty Mind, maybe the best Mr. Big track written by Paul Gilbert. Was superb. Uh, then, uh, you know, you've got sort of three fillers. Just Take My Heart's got a good uh, chorus. Like, got a co write on that with an outside writer. Not Bother With My, my Kind of Woman's okay. A little too loose. Mm, Rotor in, good a, a cappella harmony. But like I say, predict production much better. Um, but I never liked it as much. But um, uh, this uh, had, um, you know, went platinum in the States on the back of uh, the To Be With You um, hit. Uh, and um, yeah, there you go. So that's uh, Mr. Big's debut. Um, it's 35 years old today. Um, check it out. Remember to share and subscribe. And I'll see you again soon. Thanks very much.